Ahoy, and welcome back to the next episode. In today's episode, we are going to be taking a look at the Shkval, which is like the SC-25T's targeting pod, alongside two new guided munitions. But these are TV guided, and the laser guided munitions will be in the next episode. Remember, if you want to skip around, the chapters are all listed down below. Alright, now if you want to know the quick and dirty way of how to do this, it's the following. Press 7 to go into air to ground mode, press O to turn the Shkval on. Now find the target visually, which is that X airfield in front of us, move the Shkval down by pressing comma forward slash period or semicolon, find the target with the Shkval. Press enter to ground stabilize. Zoom in with minus or plus key, make sure you have the right weapon selected by pressing D until you have the 2090 for instance. We wait until the arrow is between the two check marks to let us know that we are in range. Now that we are in range, we just wait until we get LA, which we have now at the bottom, and we press and hold spacebar to fire. And there she goes. So the Shkval is basically your targeting pod for the SC-25T. It's located in the nose as you can see it moving up and down. You do not need to equip it because it's always there. Now it is only forward facing, it does not have 360 degree view, so this makes attacks a little bit limited. You're gonna need to roll in, find your target, engage the target, and turn away before you overfly the target. But with enough practice, you're gonna be able to get through it just fine. It also has a laser so you can laser your own targets, that's for the next lesson, but it is only for daytime operations. So the Shkval will actually not turn on if we are in navigational mode. We are currently in return mode, as you can see at the bottom left. So we need to press 7 in order to enter air to ground mode. Now you see GND for ground mode. And now we can press O to turn the Shkval on. Now on the heads up display, we will see the word TV indicating that the Shkval is on, as well as a little circle in the top indicating where the Shkval is looking. Now let's take a look at the Shkval screen itself. Now on the left hand side we get a little scale that basically tells you where the Shkval is looking and it will show you up to 20 degrees above you and up to 90 degrees below you. And on the top we have the same thing, but this one tells you if it's looking 40 degrees left of center and 40 degrees right of center. And on the upper right corner we have some numbers and this basically just tells you your barometric altitude. Now if there's an R next to it, that means that you're low enough that it has switched to radar altitude. In order to move the Shkval around, you have to press the comma, forward slash, period, and semicolon buttons, which is kind of clunky, so I have this bound to my slew sensor. You can always tell where the Shkval is looking because it's represented by this circle on the heads-up display. You will also immediately note that the Shkval is not ground stabilized, so it actually drifts around with the aircraft. If you press enter on the keyboard, you can ground stabilize it. You will see KC at the top and a time to impact at the bottom right corner. So now as you slew around the Shkval, you'll notice that it is much easier to move it around. Now it's a little bit difficult to see anything at this zoom level, so you can change zoom with equals and minus key on the keyboard. And you will note that you can tell the magnification by the little brackets on the corners as you zoom in and out. They disappear when you zoom in, and they reappear when you zoom out. Now as I keep moving this Shkval to the left, you're going to see the indicator on top that it's letting me know that I'm about to reach the limits of the Shkval. And once I reach those limits, it resets back to the top. And now the Shkval is back up here. You always have the option to manually reset the Shkval back to the center, this is called Boresight, by pressing right control and I on the keyboard. Now, since you're probably going to be heads down a lot of the times in the Shkval, you have this little roll indicator. It lets you know how far you're banking left or right. But you also have a pitch indicator represented numerically on the left-hand side, negative when you're descending, and positive when you're climbing. And just so I'm very clear about this, I'm not moving the Shkval around. It is boresighted in front. I'm moving the plane around, and you have these markers to let you know what the plane is doing. Okie dokie, let's go ahead and actually try to lock some stuff up. So as I mentioned before, you cannot turn the Shkval on unless you are in air to ground mode. So let's go ahead and do that by pressing 7 and turn the Shkval with O. Now, I do have some targets and those targets are in front of me on the X airfield. So I have acquired it visually. I'm going to move the Shkval down to it and now I'm going to switch my view over to the Shkval. Now, I would normally be moving forward. I have active pause turned on right now, so at this point I would definitely press enter in order to ground stabilize the Shkval. Now, obviously I'm also zoomed in so I can see a little bit better, and I'm going to choose this target on the right hand side. Just get it as close to the center as possible. Now, there is a little box around the center of the cursor, and this is your target size box. You can adjust this box with right control and left and right bracket. You can see the numbers on the upper left corner, which will tell you the size. 
don't worry about this. You don't really have to do this unless you're having trouble snapping onto the target. And if that's happening, you may need to adjust the target size to about the size of the vehicle. Okay, so just to expand on that a little bit, I put some moving vehicles down in front of us. So I'm going to move the Shkval down where I think those vehicles are, which should be right around here. And zoom in and ground stabilize the camera, which, oh, there they are. They're right there. Now, I can snap onto these vehicles if I put the cursor of the Shkval right on them. So the Shkval will actually track the vehicles. And if you adjust the target size box, it makes it a little bit easier for this tracking to happen. Here's the caveat. You can't track moving vehicles if you're too far away. So you have to get quite a bit closer. As soon as I reach 7.3 kilometers, it should switch from KC to AC. There's the AC on the top. Now it is snapped onto that target and is tracking it as it's moving on its own. And if I were to unlock it and then move the Shkval back towards the target and press enter, it will just automatically lock it. And it's very easy to keep track of these things. It should automatically do it, but you just need to be a lot closer. And again, if you're having trouble, adjust that target size box a little bit and it should work just fine. All right, moving on to the new toys we're going to be playing around with. On the left hand side, we have the KH-29T. It's a missile that can reach out to 12 kilometers. It's fire and forget and kills pretty much everything you shoot at. And on the right hand side, we have the KAB-500KR, which is a TV guided bomb. I know it looks like a missile, but it's a bomb. Okay, let's go back to our little airfield. I'm going to go ahead and reselect the same target we had before. So I'm going to get the cursor as close to the target as we can and obviously adjust the target size to roughly where it needs to be. Next, we're going to make sure that we're in the correct weapon. We have the 500KR. That's good. That's our TV guided bomb. Next, you see the little arrow as it's dropping down as we get closer to our drop zone. It needs to reach between these two tick marks. When it's in between those tick marks, you are in range to fire. You're going to fire by pressing and holding the space bar. So, as we get to 7.3, there's a snap, we see AC at the top, and the Shkval has snapped onto the target, and we are ready to drop. Alright, let's go ahead and move over to the 29T. Just as before, I'm just going to go ahead and slew over the Shkval to the target area, I'm going to zoom in, ground stabilize, find a little target I got over here, and adjust the target size box. And we're pretty much done here. We just have to keep flying towards the target and wait until this arrow reaches between these two gates. However, for this missile, even though the arrow is going to be between the two gates, until you get the LA for launch authorized, you cannot fire the missile. And it depends very heavily on the time of day. So the lighting conditions. So it's pretty good outside today. We should be able to get a lock right around now. There's the LA. We can press and hold the space bar and fire the missile. And it's as easy as that. Now, just remember that launch authorize is going to vary depending on the time of day. If it's early on or late at night, you're going to have a much shorter range. So just keep that in mind. All right, that's it for this episode. I will see you all in the next one where we talk about laser gut munitions. See ya.